Abraham Madcourt from the Sports Business Journal recently sat down with a number of sports business executives over dinner, and the overwhelming sentiment from them was that Formula One has peaked in the United States. And I tend to agree with them. Despite what all the fanboys and Liberty CEO Greg Maffei say, Formula One has definitely plateaued in the United States, and I'm not sure if it's going to continue its meteoric rise or if it's going to start to plummet, like NASCAR did post-2000s boom. Thousands, if not millions, of Americans were drawn to Netflix's Drive to Survive series, the sometimes fictionalized docuseries on Formula One. It made Formula One seem absolutely amazing, it played into some of the storylines, it created some rivalries that just didn't exist, and it introduced everybody to the politics of Formula One, one of the more enjoyable sides of Formula One when the racing is absolutely atrocious, like it has been the last two years, if we're being honest. But because of that, ESPN then got involved in Formula One, they now pay $75 million a year for the rights to broadcast Formula One, and they've seen an absolutely meteoric rise in the popularity and in the viewership. That was until 2023. Since that meteoric rise, which was definitely charged by the 2021 championship battle, Formula One has seen this increase in popularity. They've just absolutely grown at a monumental pace in the United States. Viewership for Formula One has quickly plateaued this year. It's basically flat year over year from 2022 to 2023. We've seen events like the Miami Grand Prix be down 24% in ratings this year. Just this past week at the Hungarian Grand Prix, 200,000 less people tuned in in 2023 than they did in 2022. Not exactly the meteoric rise, the 38% increase in viewership that Formula One saw from 2021 to 2022. And that's a major problem, especially as Liberty Media and Formula One continue to try to put more races into the United States up to three now that's not ideal going forward into the future and sure Formula One's going to be popular here and it's going to remain popular ish for a little bit but this reminds me a lot of like the 2000 2010s boom of the English Premier League in the United States sure Premier League soccer still very popular in the United States but there was a time where every bar in the city was opening up early, people were talking about it. It was on ESPN early in the mornings, obviously it's on NBC now, but it felt a lot bigger than it does now, and some of that died off, and you still have your core fans and some casuals tuning in every now and then. That's what Formula One feels like right now, where you had your core base, and now you had this huge influx of Drive to Survive fans, which is neither here nor there, good, bad, indifferent, all the same. But now it feels like there's a lot of the less casuals that are tuning in. And you're probably wondering like, oh, well, why is that other than like the major outside factor? And we'll get into that in just a second. But Formula One's popularity has definitely seemed to level off a little bit. Miami didn't feel like that big event this year. Just kind of felt like another race on the calendar. There wasn't a ton of hype around it. Coda's coming up in the fall fall by Las Vegas. And Las Vegas has a ton of hype. But it also has a ton of detractors as well. You have your fans from Europe that are core fans that are like, we don't want to see more American races, completely ignoring the fact that the United States is a, just a vastly large country. And uh, it's like saying that you only want to see two races in Europe. It's just a dumb statement from people that just don't understand how big this country actually is. But at the same time, Las Vegas just doesn't really look like an event that most Formula One fans are interested in. Potentially just going to be a DRS train race it's starting late for basically all americans 10 p.m pacific time 1 a.m east coast time it's great for the europeans if you live over there congrats to you for not having to wake up in the middle of the night to watch this but it just feels like formula one has lost a little bit of its luster in the united states so why has it lost its luster? Well, uh, at a time when Drive to Survive blew up, right? And when Drive to Survive blew up, it took Formula One to new heights in America. That happened during the 2020 lockdown. And because of that, a ton of fans watched some of the 2020 races, but then Drive to Survive, again, had just really boosted them. So they kind of tuned in then, and then they tuned in again in 2021 when Drive to Survive came out before the 2021 season. Then you have a lot more fans watching that 2021 season, the championship battle between Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen, and then the obvious Abu Dhabi finale where things just went up in absolute flames when the FIA just decided to not follow their own rules going forward and maybe handed a Mickey Mouse championship to Max. Some people are saying it. I'm not saying it. Just saying Lewis Hamilton, probably an eight-time champ. Should be. But because of that, you have a ton of fans that are now like, this is amazing. Look at the drama behind this. You have this incredible championship race in Abu Dhabi. 
that wasn't really that incredible, if we're being honest, up until that last one one lap shootout, if that's what we want to call it, because Lewis Hamilton dominated that race. But you have a ton of fans tuning in to be like, winner take all, essentially. They absolutely loved it. But Formula One fans, if you've been around for a while, like the core fans have, you know that a season like that only comes along once, maybe twice a decade. That's not the norm. Granted, you had your run in like 2007, 2008, where you had some pretty good championship battles there. You throw in 2010, 2012 as well, or 2014, not 2012, not 2014. Um, but yeah, you, you get the gist. Every now and then you get some good battles. More often than not, though, these championships are decided multiple races before the end of the season. That's a huge reason why Formula One's popularity, or at least viewership so far, has plateaued. We already know Max is going to win the championship. Max is going to have the championship wrapped up probably almost two months in advance of the race in Las Vegas. So it just is going to feel like an exhibition race. People really aren't that interested in watching the Red Bull dominance. The same way they would not have been interested in watching the Mercedes dominance if Drive to Survive had existed back then in the first part of the uh, Mercedes era, if we want to call it that. But because of that, they're not interested in tuning in, which is to each their own. They find it boring. They don't want to look at the strategy. When you only have 13 on-track passes, it is a little bit hard to sell regardless of how many times Sky is like, look at this pass Sergio made. He's in the best car out there. He should be making these passes on a fucking Alpha Tauri or an Alpha Romeo. It just is mind-boggling at times. But that's a major reason why Americans aren't tuning in. Throw in the fact that they're on early in the morning, East Coast early in the morning. Some people on the East Coast consider 9 a.m. early. So you have that. Throw in the fact that Red Bull is just absolutely dominating. There's really no shot of anybody else winning on speed this year and no shot of winning unless the Red Bull has some sort of major mechanical failure. And then just throw in the fact that they have other things to watch now, right? Like the world's return to its normal. See, Formula One's really expensive, and if you have the option to spend $1,500 to $2,500 a ticket for Las Vegas or to do literally anything else, if you're not that hardcore of a fan, you're probably going to pick something else because Las Vegas in November at night is not exactly Miami in the springtime. It's going to be cold, so it's very um, not confusing is what I'm looking for for why people aren't wanting to tune in. Sure, you're going to have your McLaren merch from Abercrombie or your F1 shirts from PacSun that are still going to get bought and people are still going to wear it because Formula One is considered cool, right? It is definitely the upper echelon, the pinnacle of motorsports. People definitely appreciate that. But at the same time, it's not capturing people's attention the same way it once did. America is a country full of ADHD patients, and the next shiny thing that comes along, they're going to get attached to that. And it seems like they've kind of wandered off and they're doing... Just that now. Pickleball, I don't know. Maybe that's the next craze that Americans are going to get obsessed with. But it certainly feels like the Formula One trend is a bit on the downward now. And I don't know what Liberty can do to bring that back. Cheaper ticket prices obviously are one thing. And I'm not asking for NASCAR ticket pricing here where they're like $100 or something. But asking somebody to spend a mortgage payment on, on two tickets is just kind of ridiculous when you're getting down to it, and then you have everything else that comes along with it. That would help just get people to the racetrack, um, convincing your more casuals to want to continue to go. And they haven't had a problem selling tickets yet. I'm just saying, future-wise, what they should do. TV-wise, uh, I mean, the Sky broadcast is fantastic. ESPN does a great job. It's commercial-free. Again, the biggest product problem is their product on the racetrack. IndyCar is a massively superior product. If you want to watch actual racing, IndyCar is the place to go. If you want to watch Formula One and pretend that this is amazing racing, you can continue to do that, and I will. Like, I'm going to continue watching Formula One as well. But your casual fans aren't going to keep tuning in, and that's why you're seeing this drop in ratings. And for that 18- to 49-year-old demo that Formula One had the stronghold on, it definitely seems like they're starting to meander away a little bit. They're not tuning in live anymore, and maybe they aren't even going to catch the replay. They'll just find out that Max won, and it is what it is. So the biggest problem right now is just the lack of competitive product on track. Having said all that, the FIA should do absolutely nothing to hamper what Red Bull has done. They did their jobs. They went out and made a fast car. What everybody else needs to do is just catch up to them at this point. But I do fear that some of that Americanization that fans are afraid of with this Liberty 
purchase and now ownership of Formula One will start to creep its way in. And by that, I mean like they're going to try to hamper uh, Red Bull. They're going to try to slow them down. They're going to try to make it more of a spec-ish series, not full IndyCar, but not what Formula One has been known for with their design freedoms to try to bring the field closer together. And I don't think that's in the spirit of Formula One, but having said that, a lot of the changes recently haven't necessarily been in the spirit of Formula One. So, the popularity in America has definitely plateaued. And I don't know how they get it to go back up unless they have another crazy championship battle in 2023. But that seems highly unlikely, and Formula One's popularity in the United States is going to be on life support um, by then. So... Yeah, let me know in the comments. Do you think Formula One's popularity in the United States has plateaued? Have you given up on Formula One? Which is totally fair if you have. Like, I completely understand it. But like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard. Twitter, Instagram, and threads at BreakHardBlog.